Greetings again, AP Calc BC students. Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at example three from our topic 10.11. It's all about writing Taylor and Maclaurin polynomials. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the first couple of videos because it lays the groundwork and we're going to really dive right in and we're going to assume that you're familiar with the structure of a Taylor polynomial. So let's do it. I see. So in our example three, as you can see, uh, we're given this table and the directions read a function f of x is differentiable for all orders n and has the following derivative values when x is 1. Just some preliminary information that's needed in order for us to pull off what we want to pull off. So you're typically going to see that language in all of these questions. Find a third degree Taylor polynomial for f of x centered at and thank goodness it's at x equal 1 because it's going to have to be because that's what the values in our table reflect. So I've gone ahead and I've written the polynomial formula for a Taylor. And as you can see, it's got that same structure that we've talked about. It's a very easy structure to memorize. In fact, if you're watching this video, it's very likely that you probably have it memorized at this particular stage. Normally, when we're writing a Taylor polynomial, like say the last video in example two, we had to take several derivatives and evaluate them at where we're centered. Well, the cool thing about this problem, none of that's needed. All of that heavy lifting is essentially done for us, and we would just extract our values right from the table. If this were an AP question, and it very well could be, it's highly unlikely that you would be provided this formula. I have it there just for the ease of the video. So let's go ahead and do it. P3, that is what we're looking for. The third Taylor polynomial. And that would start off with the function f evaluated at where we are centered, which is 1. And to that, we will take f prime where we're centered at 1 and multiply that by x minus 1. We continue up until the second derivative evaluate it at 1, divide by 2 factorial, multiply by x minus 1 squared, and then we're going to jump right to the final term. We're looking at the third degree polynomial. I'm sorry, the third derivative of f for our third degree polynomial as our last term. We'll divide by 3 factorial, and then we have x minus 1 cubed. And all we have to do is fill the values in from the table. They're all there in front of us. 2 is f of 1. f prime of 1 is negative 3. So I'll just plop a minus 3 with my quantity there. f double prime is 1. If I divide by 2 factorial, that's the same as just 2. So I'll leave it like this. And then finally, I notice that f triple prime is negative. So we have a negative 6 divided by 3 factorial. I could just say 6 over 3 factorial, but I could also simplify that. 6 over 6 is just 1. And then I could throw down my value, and there I go. And that's probably what the answer would look like if it was going to match a free response question. Or, I'm sorry, a multiple choice question. You wouldn't have to simplify at all beyond evaluating the functions if it were a free response. You do not, under any circumstance, need to expand these out. That kind of defeats the purpose, and we'll never, ever have to do that for these questions. And that's it. That's how you would write a Taylor polynomial given a table of values. It's a very easy way to do it. It's sometimes asked of you because it's quick, and it's testing your knowledge of the structure of the polynomial on the AP exam, so it's a good question. Got one more video planned for you to round out topic 10.11. Be sure to stick around for that. If you like what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you next time.